there humans, hello there hippies, hello there earthlings. I'm Bush Grum Blitz, I'm back with another dose of wonking aggression in the shape of my good mate Martin Dogger's attempt at the tier six shoulder a wonking damage competition win. Now this is actually a league leader for a short while. It's since been taken over by a monstrous 4200 damage KV2 game from Big Besha 65, another uh, another European server fellow. Now, Martin's a contributor on the European server. He does a lot of videos, both for Wargaming and for himself, and he's got a great YouTube channel. So I'm going to put that link up here now, and you can check that out, and you should probably pop along there and see it. He's a funny bugger, and he's a, he's a lovely bloke to talk to. He's a, a long-time subscriber and patron too. So, Marty, hope you get a little bit of traffic your way from that, mate. You, you thoroughly deserve it. Now, let's talk about this game. If it was on degree of difficulty... Martin would still be leading the league with the uh, this Nashorn game because surely the Nashorn is a high degree of difficulty tank and it is a sterling drive. I won't give anything away. We'll just commentate on the gameplay and, and what's actually going on. And we're going to have a, a little bit of an insight into how you play an absolute glass cannon with some solid mobility. And that's exactly what the Nashorn is. Uh, it's got the most ridiculously soft armor profile. But Martin's doing the right thing. He's using the rest of his team's hit point pool and armor profile to give him a little bit of a chance. What he's doing is using the lights, mediums, and heavies in a screen. So he's never really the last guy in the line. You don't want to be the person holding the bag when the reds flank or a medium turns up or anything like that because it will generally cost you your hit points if not your life. Now he's in an ideal position here although he would probably rather that the reds were in excess of 220, 240 meters away because at the present where he is if he fires it is going to give away his position for anyone with full crew skills and a decent view range. So he switches over here to the left, and he will actually then be able to put shots on this T1 Heavy. And you can see there's a bush there. So he will get shots on that T1 without breaking his camo, despite the fact he is inside of 220 meters of view range, and the T1 quite likely could have spotted him if he was on the right-hand side. Now, this VK301H, unfortunately, is sideways out with crap camo, and he has just broken his camouflage there, and is getting wrecked. Uh, Martin lets him go through, pops out and hits this M6. Very tempting here to blow adrenaline. One of the problems with a, a tank like the Nashorn uh, is that because it's so soft, you can blow adrenaline or something along those lines and actually have to retreat during the full length of the adrenaline because you will get hit. And you're gonna see in a second, Marty's gonna take some incoming fire. There you go, and you can see straight through. Despite the fact he was angling up and getting out of cover, and now he's back out there, and he needs to put a shot in this T-150 because things are going to go very, very south, very, very quick for the good guys here, the green guys. Those nasty reds, we've all encountered them before. They're not doing it right, and they are refusing to die by the numbers. Shinobi here really leaves himself open, and a quick snapshot, lovely snapshot, and something the Nashorn does have is great gun handling. And Martin's using this area up the top with elevation, soft cover, and hard cover really, really well. And he's trying to get his team not to push, but that's like trying to hold back the uh, the years, mate. Can't be done. T-150 facing the wrong way. Martin's just waiting for that angle to snap back. Another one in the T-150. Look at the damage pour out the end of this gun. The M6 has decided he wants some of that. Martin's going to take another bite of the cherry in a sec. He doesn't reset the camo. The M6 hits him again. Now the M6 moves forward. Martin's going to try and hit him and jerk a shot back. And you're going to see there's going to be one hit just behind him on the right. And great shot here. Absolute crackerjack shot on that M6. Great gun handling from the Nashorn. The T150 has horrific gun handling. Is sideways and cops it. Absolutely deserve it. Three to go, uh, two tanks to the good for the greens, but we're about to lose the other tank. Martin's on four kills, has done an awful lot of carrying the heavy load. The VK2801 nuts the Chi new, which is fantastic. Marty's on four kills, he's on one kill. Almost a Rossini gone begging there. Um, they've got an SU100 left, which is a dastardly tank for Martin to deal with. And you're just gonna see he's letting his binoculars and camo net set there. 
And something that I carry on most of my German tanks, these German light TDs where available, is the Binox and Camo combo because you just can't afford to be spotted first or if you're spotted first, uh, to not have uh, the opportunity at least to return fire. And with this kind of armor profile, you can be hit with HE from big derp guns and get wiped out very, very quickly. Now, the VK3001D says Martin Dogger well played, and, and goddamn, he's right. This has been a superb effort. Martin's poured in the fire, a couple of fantastic snapshots. He set himself up per perfectly. There's the SU100. Bang. Playing with 40 ping looks pretty nice to me. I've got to say, I'd love to play with ping like this. This is absolutely wonderful. Unlucky to get a just ding there. The shed took just enough off that shell to let that VK3001D get away without taking a side shot. Now Martin's resetting the camo. Good move here, going behind the rock. Now he doesn't have to worry so much about hard cover. Would have been nice to get a big, big roll there on that SU100. And he's just gonna go out of screen on that VK2801. Martin's in a rock and a hard place here, but he's got a one shot SU100 and his VK over here. So he's gonna roll over here and do the business. Let's see how we go. Lovely shot straight through the tracks. Loves it. Straight through the tracks. He takes one. 169 hit points left. He needs to get this one in and then back up quickly. Oh, ho, ho, ho. low roll for the VK. He's tracked. He puts a blind shot in. Very, very upset. Oh, he's done it. Five kills, only 34 hit points to go through here. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, my goodness. This is absolutely brutal. you got to feel for him. You have to feel for him. Marty, mate, this was a game for the ages, and it's all gone the way of a terrible internet connection, my friend. Whew, I would have been so pleasant. I would have been screaming the house down as the lag went there. But 3,826 damage from the Nash Horn. Top Gun. Uh, look, look at that. What a monster attempt at carrying. Got a second class even in a losing side. The sniper patch. The lot. Uh, the old Radley Walters. Marty, what a great effort. So if you haven't already subscribed to Martin's channel, please do so. It's well worth getting in on. Uh, he's one of the better YouTubers out there and always to the point and thoughtful in his commentary. Keep the shoulder of wonking damage comp numbers coming in. Uh, I think Big Besher, 65, at just over 4K, is leading 6. Uh, Tritoki is leading Tier 7 in the SU-122, 44, with 4,975 damage. Uh, Dasem Ultor, a long-time love machine and subscriber, is leading the Tier 8 with 4,821 big, big biscuits from the T-34. Uh, Slava, another European boy in, on 6,578 in the Type 61 at Tier 9. And Otto, the sole entry from the Asian server at 7,080 damage in the Leo 1, is uh, pumping up the numbers there at Tier X. So if you haven't already got your videos in, please send all entries to bushkawonking at gmail.com. Look forward to reading, talking, chatting, downloading, making a beautiful, beautiful tank love. Uh, until next time, look after your families and stay safe on the battlefield.